Mesa is a cornerstone level in a game called Surf, a movement game where you must preserve your speed along ramps. Surf is primarily played inside of the Counter-Strike games, like CSGO, but its history extends far back into the days of Quake. In the years after its release, Surf underscore Mesa and its sequels become arguably the most recognizable maps in Surf. It was remade in Roblox, in Left 4 Dead 2, it even made its way into a mobile game. And most importantly, the map was easy, a favorite among new surfers, making it one of the most played and most completed levels. As a consequence, the public eye was particularly drawn to this map, making fast times and world records highly sought after. To conquer this map could guarantee tens if not hundreds of thousands of views with your name on it. And upon review, we will also uncover the birth of a legend, Levi. But first, Surf. The mechanics of Surf are identical to that of Counter-Strike. To turn in the air, for example to the left, you must let go of W, press A, and move your mouse to the left. This allows you to gradually change your trajectory and gain speed. In fact, in Surf, this mechanic is even more powerful, as the setting SV Air Accelerate is cranked from 12 to 150. This setting also allows you to Surf. By pressing the directional key that smushes you against the ramp, right when the ramp is on the right and left when on the left, you can stick to it. Then by turning while on the ramp, surfers can affect their height. The characteristic flicks in surf must come from left and right movements on ramps. You can't simply aim and fly up or down. At its core, surf is an incredibly simple but devastatingly deep game, as while your range of movement is technically limited to one plane, beyond this you have absolute control and the precision required at the top level of surf is unparalleled. The best surfers must be perfectly flush with each ramp as they board. And as you'll see, this aspect of play has improved massively over the years. However, the first stop on our list is not a surf map. This is GM Arid Mesa by Arblark. Inspired by Black Mesa, which was still in beta at the time, Arblark created what was essentially a color palette for Mesa. What's underneath this barren site is immediately recognizable, the original aesthetic for Mesa. A few months later, Arblark saw a preview video for another classic, Surf LT Omnific, and was inspired to create a map of their own. And on January 4th, 2014, Surf Mesa was released on Gmod, changing Arblark's life forever. But these videos would not be possible without the sponsor, Leadify. Leadify tracks your true performance beyond what the base game captures. Normally, you finish the game, and all you get is your rank. Leadify automatically captures everything, from utility usage to entry frags, and turns it into a raw score. So when your friend tells you it's your fault, you can actually see what happened. Leadify rewards those who play smart and help their team win, and it keeps track of your achievements, like games where you traded well or got nasty multi-kills. Pro users get a highlight system so you can capture and upload your best moments automatically and 2D replays of the entire game. Click my link below to sign up for free. Upon release, Mesa was almost immediately well received with what for the time was an outstanding aesthetic and highly accessible surf. The map was noob friendly. Each ramp is placed logically in front of the other so that as long as you kept your speed, you'd be fine and the map was actually fun to play, resulting in it being nominated on servers quite often. And further, adding to the mystique of the map, there was a secret easter egg that affected the whole lobby. By flying into this lava spout at the end to press this button, going underneath the start zone to press this button, flying above the map into a secret room using the secret combination and activating all the rocks and trees in a specific order, a song would play for everyone. Because of this, players have completed Mesa well over 100,000 times. This popularity led Arblarg, the mapper, to create several sequels in the same theme, Mesa Revo, Mesa Mine, and Mesa Aether, each of which respected in their own right, and eventually Surf Kitsune, which is by far one of the most popular and recognized maps ever made. The point is that Mesa was known. It was closely associated with Surf as a whole. This is the first world record on Mesa to be uploaded to YouTube, Yaman, on January 14th, 2014. Yaman was a very well-known surfer, at one point rank one in the world. There are some things you may notice about the run already, apart from the video quality. The surfer is smooth, 
They have slow and precise movements that control their speed. Early runs on Mesa were, on the surface, pretty similar to the modern route. This flick skipping the ramp on the left, this skip an early flick to these ramps. But the next section would, over the years, prove to be one of the most devastating parts of the run. Surfers had to perform a delicate flick, nearly into the ceiling above, before falling into the massive cavern below. Reaching the final ramp was actually a relief, as the end gave you a boost and was not nearly as difficult. However, the map wasn't perfect. In this early version of the map, there were several ramp bugs, areas of the map that would suddenly stop you. Most were in the first checkpoint, but could occur at many points throughout. These were avoidable, but not obviously visible, and made performing the most important part of the map even harder. This is because your speed from the first checkpoint would be carried throughout the map, a fact that Sinky capitalized on in his world record run. In the summer after Mesa's release, former rank one Sinky took the world record twice, bringing the record below its first 51 second barrier. Yaman's run had a couple of errors, a shaky curve on this ramp and improper board on the next. Sinky does a proper catch, which meant he converted his falling speed to horizontal speed. Side by side, it's clear Sinky is traveling just slightly faster, a gap that becomes even more apparent later in the run. And at the end, Sinky enters the final choke point much lower, spending less time in the air and performs the final flick with a lower angle. This sends him below faster, achieving the first sub 51. This record would stand for over six months until it was taken by Saxton in February of 2015. Saxton is regarded by many as the smoothest surfer from his time period. This meant his movement was free of any shakes and that he was able to produce incredibly precise boards. And on Mesa, this was a major advantage, on top of the fact that Saxton spent 20 total game hours on this map alone. The reason Saxton was faster than Zinke was again, more units in the first two checkpoints carried throughout the rest of the run. Saxton and Zinke would trade the record several times before Zinke's final run in March of that year. And later, two other legendary surfers, Evil Mr. Muffins and Melander, would both set a 5279. But there was something hidden in plain sight that would save major time on the record. In the comment section of Saxon's last run, there were two comments calling into question his final ramp, where Saxon appears to ride it correctly. Most surf maps have a speed limit, generally 3,500 units per second. If you try to go higher than 3,500, your speed will stay the same. So you have a choice. Go all the way down to the bottom of the ramp or stay high. It turns out that landing quite awkwardly and staying close to the top of the ramp was optimal, as any speed that would help you clear the lava-filled room could be the difference. Side by side, you can see the raw difference in speed, even if minor. But it turns out that this strategy was known for years. At the very end, a high-ranking surfer comments on Zinke's low board, a surfer named QR. While QR was notorious for finding and using exploits, like this ridiculous strategy on Surf Exile, he's also known for deep knowledge of the Source Engine's mechanics, who openly spoke about new strategies and potential improvements with both friends and foe. But regardless, with the comments on Saxon's run and a world record on the line, it was only a matter of time until someone implemented the strategy. On November 16th, 2015, Beetle set his first world record on Mesa, beginning a four-year span of dominance on the map. Beetle's first run had several minor improvements. At the first drop, Beetle is one of the first to properly air strafe. This is a technique that allows you to gain speed by turning in the air. Next, he exits and reboards the ramps on checkpoint one to prevent unnecessary collision, also called a ramp strafe. These two techniques allow him to carry just a little bit more speed. And finally, Beetle is the first on record to implement the final ramp strategy, boarding incorrectly to maintain more height, altogether saving one tenth of a second. And for the effort, Beetle's run was viewed more than 100,000 times, due both in part to the prestige of the run itself and the rising popularity of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. See, competitive surf took place almost entirely on Counter-Strike Source on the most prestigious surf server in the world, KSF, but an enormous population of players were on CSGO. 
and they loved Mesa, as well as the other easiest and most iconic maps. Over the coming years, Beetle would dominate on popular low-tier maps and make a name for himself, amassing 6,000 followers on Twitch and getting partnered. He was the easy map god. In two instances, Beatles' runs were taken by competitors, first by Saxon in 2016 and later by Red Sea, a former rank 1, and on both occasions, Beatle responded and reclaimed his world record on the same day. Beetle became a master of the map, spending somewhere between 30 and 40 hours of playtime, and setting his final time uncontested on January 27, 2018. And yet, he would soon after retire from Surf almost entirely. Mesa was regarded as mostly solved by Beetle, a map that would eventually be completely optimized and uninteresting. But there was one skip, an insanely difficult strategy that would change the course of the map's history forever. In checkpoint one, there is the hole. Normally, surfers would ride the top of the ramp prior, drop in, and weave to avoid the walls. This was okay, but surfers would inevitably lose speed with these wide turns, and it is likely the best way for you and 99% of surfers. However, it was theoretically possible for pros to avoid this problem entirely. By flicking off from two ramps prior, surfers could possibly go above the last ramp, just under the ceiling, and go directly into the hole. This would allow them to keep far more speed for the rest of the map, an enormous advantage on a hyper-competitive map. To do this, they would have to get a ton of speed from the beginning. Unfortunately, there were several barriers preventing this from happening. As Saxon and Beetle noted, Mesa was a bit of a mess with ramp bugs that could randomly kill the run. Even if you get enough speed, it might not matter. But on top of this, there was something actually wrong with the map itself. This is because there are triggers that extend out of the ground into the air. This same trigger existed at the final hole vastly increasing the difficulty of the run. Thus, Beetle179 had opted not to do this skip for most of his career. It added too many attempts to a run that was already unforgiving. That was until 2017, when renowned mapper Mesog changed everything, fixing every single ramp on the map, redoing the shadows and creating new models. This caused what is basically the size of the map to max out and required him to remove the secret, but left a functional map that looked just like the original. In addition to this, at some point in the years prior, the triggers of Mesa were modified by KSF, the server, to conform to the floor on both the first and final hole, making both the theoretical skip and final cut easier. When Beetle set his final run in 2018, he was in fact playing on the new Surf Mesa Fixed. It was still nearly impossible and simply not cost effective to go for, and Beetle's time was amazing without it. No one expected the skip to be performed in run, let alone in a world record. Then somehow, seemingly out of nowhere, a new name appeared in a video that has only been seen by a few thousand. The player that would go down in history is the single most skilled surfer to ever live. Levi would achieve the first ever Mesa skip in run, quashing Beetle's long-standing dominance and sending Mesa into a new era of development. Levi achieved this by generating more units in the beginning of the map, air strafing strongly into the first drop and boarding farther back. This sacrifice of distance for speed, in addition to some spectacular ramping and movement, gave Levi just enough speed to perform the flick barely clearing the floor, and while he is clearly behind the world record at this point, it quickly converts into a strong speed advantage. And into the final cut, he is a whole tenth of a second faster than Beetle. Surprisingly, this didn't get Levi a whole lot of attention, less than his summit world record a couple weeks prior. And just a few days later, another unlikely name appeared, Cole. See, Cole wasn't a surfer on CSGO. He surfed on Roblox, a game notorious for sketchy remakes and microtransactions, but Roblox Surf was actually quite good, with most of the mechanics of its counterparts. It even had a version of Surf Mesa, and Cole was by far one of the best Roblox surfers. When Cole took the world record from Levi, he was trailing behind for most of the run. 
0.01 behind at the beginning and the final checkpoint. Bacol's final cut is nearly perfect, just barely going over the floor and falling to the ramp faster. Levi had cleared the floor too, but with much more room to spare and allowed Cole to temporarily hold his first ever world record. According to Cole, learning the skip was by far the hardest part of the map. He and Levi, two relatively new world record holders, were the only ones in the world to have ever done it. Yet, just hours later, Levi reclaims the record from Cole, who then takes it back on the same day. The world record for Mesa had been broken more times in two days than it had been in years. This was the beginning of a battle between Levi, Cole, and another surfer that would last for two years. On the same day as Cole's retake, KSF Records uploaded a new record by Crashfort. Crashfort was an expert known for finding new routes, but some contested the legitimacy of Crash's record because it was completed on a different game entirely. Crashfort played the map on Momentum Mod, which was a one-to-one -one recreation of Surf's physics and is currently being tested for release in the near future. We even have Crashfort's original footage to see the units. At the skip ramp, Crash had 2,305 units, flicking correctly and being the third ever to perform the skip in Run. However, there was a real issue. The end zone was pushed forward on Momentum Mod, making it just slightly longer to reach on Counter-Strike. But neither Crashfort nor KSF claimed the record was a true world record. It was mostly uploaded as a joke and a showcase of Momentum Mod's potential. And so, Cole's 49-39 would stand. It's in the next month that our final challenger appeared, the third highest ranked surfer in the world and to some, the most well-rounded surfer of all time. Roldar had a dream. He was going to set the first sub 49 second run on Mesa. This would have been an unbelievable goal, almost half a second needed to lower the record this much. And on June 22nd, 2019, Roldar took the first step, tying Cole's time. Roldar has an incredible number of units into the skip, more than Crash for it before and after. And while he's behind now, he's able to creep ahead later, performing very well in the middle section of the map, less optimized at this point. Combined with a very early flick on the end cut, Roldar shaves off 0.04. I was able to speak with Roldar, Cole, and Levi about their experience on the map, and by far this final flick was the hardest section. Flick too high and you would hit the ceiling, too low and you would simply fail. Even if you did everything correctly, there was a huge choke point at the end. However, Cole noted that there were two less recognized boards that could make or break the run, parallel boards that required you to ramp strafe. And Cole would prove this true in his next world record. It was uploaded to KSF Records as a battle. While Cole is basically even with Roldar after checkpoint one, he performs the first parallel board and flick perfectly, leading to 26 extra units, which he was able to maintain until the end of the run. If you're having trouble telling why Cole's run was faster, it's not your fault. The advantages on this map would come down to very minor improvements in air strafing and boarding. In fact, in Roldar's final world record on the map, he would take the record by just one hundredth of a second. But unfortunately, Cole would do something that would end Roldar's career on the map forever. Cole beat the record three times in a row, the final of which would be seen by 450,000 people, making it one of the most viewed surf runs of all time. He was simply able to generate way more speed in the first checkpoint, 40 more than Roldar's final run. This resulted in five hundredths of a second shaved off by checkpoint two. And without prompting, Cole would rebeat the record three more times a month later, in the final run leaving the first ramp earlier for a faster drop, performing the skip amazingly with 2010 units and a perfect end flick, just barely clearing the floor. This saved .1 overall, leaving the record just shy of the 48 second barrier. In total, Cole would spend six days of playtime on this map alone, over 150 hours. Cole, through pure determination, had etched his name permanently into surf history. Roldar and Cole spoke fondly of their rivalry, both tough competitors that respected each other. Roldar cared less about beating Cole and more about achieving his dream, the first 49 second run. But Cole was simply too strong, and after taking his own record five times, Roldar retired from the map. And then, Levi returned. See, in the meantime, Levi had established a huge name for himself. 
In 2020, he won a tournament called Surf's Upside Down, earning a sizable prize. He used the prize money to buy a PC, as it turns out that he had been surfing on a low-budget laptop for his entire career. And with his newfound advantage, he strived for a new peak. At the end of the year, KSF creates a Best World Records of the Year video. In 2020, the community voted for the 15 Best World Records, and Levi wanted all of them. Each one of these panels is a world record that Levi set in the weeks after getting his new PC. After achieving a total of 9 world records that made it into the top 15, already the majority, Levi tried to sneak in one more entry. On January 2nd, 2021, before the voting had finished, he achieved a historic milestone for the entire game mode. Levi was able to break the first sub-49 barrier on Mesa of 4898. He did this in part with an entirely different skip strategy, riding the ramp before for longer and ramp strafing off. This left him higher on the ramp and with extra units. Shortly after, he jets into the first parallel ramp board and leaves with a record 3070 units, saving 0.05 in that section alone. And because of the extra units, he can get to the next ramps faster and with some amazing movement around the rocks, saves a whole tenth of a second. And while Cole would, just eight days after, also achieve a sub 49 second run, his final world record on the map, Levi retook again on June 30th, 2021. The last run in almost two years. Riding higher on the first ramp and leaving earlier with an altogether slower run for the rest. Levi and Cole also had an amicable rivalry, both believing the map's record could go lower, and interested in the exposure it could provide to their brands. Levi also held Beatles' final runs in high regard, as they were done without the skip and on an older version of the map. Mesa was the window where the rest of the world saw our game, getting a mere glimpse of what was possible. Thank you to Arblar, Beetle Cole, Crash for Geb, Levi, Roldar, Saxton, and Yaman for making this video possible. To the cast who you've been watching this entire time, we film every video at my Twitch channel, and all those who gave critical input. Please like it if you liked it and subscribe for more surf content. And if you love this, you're gonna love my previous surf history video. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck sliding those triangles.